This is what my Ender 3 originally sounded like when I first got it. It had these loud, whiny, and pitchy sounds during the printing, and it was really annoying. So after upgrading the main board with SKR Mini E3, which has better drivers, those annoying sounds were no more, and I could not even tell the difference between the sounds of the printer being idle versus when it was printing. I even had to add a G code at the end of my prints just to make it beep to let me know when it was done printing. This was great and I could probably live with this, but I wonder if we could improve it further. I noticed most of the noise now came from the hot end cooling fan, so I decided to replace the fans with some from Noctua. They are the first name to come up with when you think of quiet computer fans, and a lot of resources have already used them to great success with this upgrade. So here I bought a couple of Noctua fans. This one on the right is the Noctua 410mm FLX. This is a 12 volt model. And this one on the left is the Noctua 420mm fan, and it runs at 5 volts. I'm not exactly sure why I got the 5 volt version, but it really doesn't matter for this application. I'm going to be using the 420 to replace the hot end cooling fan. From what I've been reading, the stock cooling fan on the Ender 3 actually has a higher rated airflow compared to the 410 Noctua. So the 420 has better airflow, and I don't have to sacrifice performance for the better noise reduction. Plus, the difference is only a dollar. This is the fan packaging. It comes with a few extra pieces, which is nice of them to include. Uh, but down here is the fan, and look at how well the wiring is sleeved. They really make some great stuff. Since we are using the 420, we'll need to print a fan cover to support the thicker fan. I got this off of Thingiverse, and it looks similar to the old cover. Um, it's pretty simple, but it will work. If you guys have any suggestions for other fan covers I should use, let me know. I'm going to be using some 24 gauge stranded wires for this project. These wires are also silicone covered, which makes them very flexible. I definitely recommend getting these stranded and silicone covered wires as you want flexibility for easier movement and cable management on your Ender 3. We will also need a device commonly known as a buck converter, also known as a step down converter. Since we are dealing with 24 volts in our Ender 3 power supply, using a voltage divider to get down to 5 volts will produce a lot of heat. I got a 10 pack of these for 8 bucks on Amazon. These are pretty simple to use. There's a tiny little screw here that you turn to adjust the output voltage. On either side, there are positive and negatives for the input source and the output. Again, we could technically use a voltage divider here, but because of the heat problem, we are sticking with the buck converter. The thin red and black wires down here are connected to the stock cooling fan. So on the main board, the power port is the left one out of the bottom three power docks. If you are unsure, I definitely recommend referring back to the wiring diagram of your board to be absolutely sure before you proceed. I'm going to be removing the, these wires so that I can insert my wires connected to the, my buck converter. So again, here's a look at the wiring diagram for your reference. And these are the wires that I'm connecting to the port. Uh, the red one is going to be on the left, which is power. The black one will be on the right, which is ground. Make sure you don't switch these up. I got my multimeter here to test the output of the buck converter. We need to make sure the output matches 5 volts, which are what the fans are rated for. Not having the correct voltage will damage the fans. I'm attaching the positive and negative probes to the output, and we're getting 0 0.874 volts. I just need to adjust the potentiometer screw until I get close to 5 volts as I can. It's alright if it's not exactly 5, but try your best to get as close as possible. So we're going to keep on turning, and then almost there. Alright, 5.03. That seems good enough. On the front end, I have the old fan cover off, and I'm just going to cut the old stock fans off because I'm simply too lazy to pull the wires out and create a new one. I did leave slack in case I want to reuse the old fans for another project. I'm going to be splicing a connector point at the end of this wire, uh, which will then connect to the wires on the uh, Noctual fans. The reason why I'm not just splicing it directly is because I think the wires that come with the Noctual fans are just so nicely insulated and wrapped that I just don't want to cut them. Um, obviously, you can go ahead and splice and cut them yourselves, which will probably make the whole wiring management look a lot nicer. 
Finishing up the back, I have the other end of the buck converter connected to the old stock fan wires. I'm going to shrink wrap this entire thing to make sure that it holds in place. Alright, we have it all wrapped up. I'm going to plug in the uh, main board fan and then we're going to test. I can definitely hear a significant difference from the new fan. However, now I'm starting to realize how much noise the fan on the mainboard case is making, uh, which is leaving me quite unsatisfied just to stop here. Luckily, I have a Noctua 410 from earlier, which I can use to fix this. This was pretty easy. I just did the exact same steps as I did before, but this time the buck converter is set to 12 volts for this fan, and I'm just gonna have to close it up and uh, that's it. All right, so this is the results of the two fan upgrades. Um, this is the printer at IDO, and let's listen to it. It sounds fairly calm and doesn't really make too much of a sound other than a slight humming. So this is a tremendous improvement over the original uh, sound and uh, for the most part now it's actually kind of scary silent because now I don't even know when it's moving. Um, there is a, a more sound when you do print because as you're printing the PSU fan starts kicking in so I'm going to show you that right now. So the sound does increase a little during the printing process, but it's still fairly quiet for the most part. With ambient noise around, you won't even notice it. If I want to go even further, I guess I could upgrade the fan on the power supply as well, but that would be something I'll consider for another time. I definitely think this is a worthy upgrade, but if you don't really care about the noise or if you have your own separate space for a printer, then I guess it doesn't really matter and you can save your time and money. However, I know a lot of you are probably sharing space with family and you know what they say, happy wife, happy life. If you have any other suggestions for upgrades on Ender 3, let me know. And until next time, stay dorky.